Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We're in Floroma Town. Well, we were. Not anymore, just kidding. Actually, I don't even think we were officially. I believe this is Route Doso Cinco. Hmm, Dozero Cinco. That's uh, pretty good French. Okay, so moving forward, heading this way. On to 205, as you can see, I am correct as per usual. But we were being accosted for help by this small girl, her papa, an employee at the Valley Windworks, calling the Galactic Goons space aliens. And she needs some help. So, here's some Galactic Goons. Maybe we'll interact with these guys. What happens? Okay. Well, that's rude. Seems like they're at least into alternative forms of energy, so good for them for going green. You know? Kudos, Team Galactic. Anyway, here is the Valley Windworks, which we can currently see is being blockaded by yet another Team Galactic goon, but they are not in the way of us grabbing this potion. That will be ours. Let's go ahead and talk to this person and see what they have to say. Surprisingly, they all look the same. I wonder how, uh, how stressful it must have been for whoever the mother of Team Galactic to be for everybody to, uh, to have this many children identical. So we're not going to go into the Valley Windworks without a fight. Let's do it. Here we go. These fights, unfortunately, are a little samey, but that's kind of the case with pretty much any of the various teams of baddies. You know, back in the day with your, you know, Team Rockets, you would wind up fighting against oodles of Coughings and Zubat, Rattata, etc. So, I mean, at least it's kind of interesting that Team Galactic does use Glammeow, which is nice. I'm not sure if that's a staple Pokemon or not, but I know that it's, as you'll see in a little while, it is quite a popular choice. But that's okay. Glemio is surprisingly tanky. You wouldn't expect it to. It's also pretty darn fast. So, credit where credit is due. That incredibly difficult battle is over. Thank goodness, I wasn't sure if we were going to make it. Jeez. Getting owned by some kid. One of the things that I don't know if that's in this game or not in relation to the original Diamond and Pearl is this dialogue. You know, we've already seen noob and now we're seeing owned, which I mean is kind of consistent with the time. I mean, that the original games came out around 2005 and that was kind of when that leap gamer speak was really popular. So maybe this is a throwback to that, but uh, it appears that this, <laughs> he's very self-aware though, you know, he's willing to admit that he himself is a loser, or they actually, I'm not entirely sure what Team Galactic is. There's no real clear way to know what the grunts are, but that's okay. I'm gonna waddle around in this grass here for a few moments and see if I can find something neat. Okay, this is interesting. Find ourselves a wild Shellos, the pink variety. Shellos is a cool Pokemon. It looks like it has uh, some very questionable appendages on its head. But I do know that Shellos, depending upon where you are in Sinnoh, will change its appearance. So this is, I guess, the... I don't know exactly where I am on the map, so I, I can't quite say. But this is... There's an east and west variant you say, what's say? of Shellos, so that's kind of dependent on what color you get. I don't think it changes anything besides the aesthetic, but, you know, that's still pretty neat. So we'll go ahead and add Shellos to the team. Let's go ahead and read about the Sea Slug Pokemon. Its colors and shapes differ from region to region, and so now two types are confirmed. Thanks, game. Ahead of the... Out of the curve here on this one. All right, so we have another male S name. 
Uh, whew, this is going to be a tough one. Let's say... Um, I don't see it. That's part of the problem is I don't really know a ton of the male S names here. I want to say... I'm I'm drawing an, an absolute blank. My goodness. Let's think... Let's think of fun things. What I mean, I say that. I say, let's think of fun things, and then my eventual choice is probably going to be something very, very basic. Um, I I will figure this out. Samuel it is. Okay, so that just came to me. Very quickly, came to me in a dream. Samuel the Shellos, or Shellos, however you say that. It's actually not what I was intending to hope to get from this grass. That's okay. We have to head our way back to Floroma Town. And I apologize in advance if this game's frame rate glitches out on me. My goodness, having a little bit of difficulty here. Nintendo Switch with this heavy game of Pokemon. Wouldn't want to tax you too much. Taxes are theft, so. But anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and heal up here. Now we got a team of five. Shellos is a, I believe a, uh, let's see. Shellos is a water and water. I believe it becomes upon evolution, which it does. Spoilers. I believe Shellos gains a ground type, so that's interesting. Also, these old people are very interesting. Will we talk to them right now? Nope. That's a surprise for later. That's a reward that you get if you've been playing all kinds of Pokemons. If you got saved data from other games, you might be able to take advantage of that. But what's nice, once again, is now that we still have the experience all, that Shellos, being a little bit, you know, underleveled at this point, will have the luxury of not having to participate in battle at all, just an absolute mooch. Not helping one tiny bit. Now it does appear, I keep going back to this because I keep clicking the wrong thing. I'm assuming that a serious nature doesn't do anything. Like it's probably, maybe it's like a neutral nature. It doesn't seem like Shellos is being impacted by the nature at all. That's interesting. Also, I don't believe Shellos is very fast. That's not quite what we're looking for on our team, but that's okay. So these grunts are after that sweet, sweet honey. They need to attract Pokemon in great numbers. But unfortunately we are witnessing them trying to intimidate this balding man. So instead, they will engage us in battle to silence what we've witnessed. I don't think so. We're not gonna be complicit. See something, say something. We're gonna take down these fools. We've got a couple Pokemon on the team that still are in need of getting enough experience to evolve. In this case, Steven and Bert. I'm not entirely sure like what was the designation on, you know, kind of just the overall choice of the Team Galactic Pokemon, like what thought process was it where it's like yeah we want team galactic to be represented by these pokemon in particular it makes the most sense because of reasons like i don't i'm not entirely sure what went into it because like it kind of makes sense that you have team rocket for example where the majority of their pokemon are kind of like poison types or they're the ones that kind of have a bit of like a an evil motif to them but Team Galactic, not entirely sure. I mean, like, Glammeow, the Hoenn bug Pokemon. I don't really see the common thread. I mean, I am pretty obtuse, so that could be entirely my fault. But in general, not 100% sure why they chose what they did. And that, I mean, honestly, if I was doing my job and... I was completely embarrassed by a small child. Maybe I'd feel the same way, but think of it this way, Team Galactic Grunt. You're not just going up against any child. You're going up against the Wonder Kid. 
the prodigy. The OPOG. Who just evolved their Shanks into a Luxio. So let's see what the Pokedex has to say about that. Also another very adorable kind of tweener sprite that's very goofy looking. So Luxio, it's claws loose electricity with enough amperage to cause opponents to faint. It lives in small groups. Introverted, shy, just like d -Mite. understandable. Also, having read that, the amount of people who incorrectly use the word loose in place of lose and vice versa, that's just too dang high. So you have to do back-to-back -back battles. Hopefully this isn't wearing you guys out too much. Wouldn't want to be done in by two galactic grunts. And see, the Zubat makes a little bit more sense. Like, I kind of get the, the evil henchman kind of vibe. That's kind of the way that, I mean, I guess that's stereotypical because I cut my teeth on red and blue. <laughs> but in general, I just don't kind of get evil vibes from a Wurmple. Maybe a Glammeow, it's kind of like a, like a mischievous kind of evil cat. I suppose that would count, maybe? But by admission, that Grunt is saying that they wish that they had some decent Pokemon, so maybe this is just kind of what happens. Maybe you don't get to cut into the fold of, like, the better, more advanced evil Pokemon when you're at the associate level. So we were able to help this man in his follicle failure. We have the Valley Windworks key. He's given it to us. Very kind. We love that. And they were trying to rob him of his sweet, sweet honey. Get ready for his sweetness. They were they were weird. And I think that's why I like this the best. Is like the grunts in this game, or like the evil, like at least the grunts, they themselves, I mean, all of the, all of the evil teams, the grunts are usually like kind of dense and you know ignorant. But in this one, they just seem like it's very goofy and they don't quite understand what's going on. And I really appreciate that feeling. I can definitely relate. So Honey is a game gimmick that first started here in the Sinnoh games. That sounds like something related to like the Olympics. In the Sinnoh games. That when you slather it, slather it on a tree. Over time, I believe it takes about 12 hours. I'm not a 100% sure on that, so Take that with a grain of salt, but the next day, roughly, if you play one day and the next, when you pick it up, you'll find, upon revisiting that same tree, has to be the same tree you put it on, that you will have a wild Pokemon jump out at you. And there's some pretty good choices for wild Pokemon. We may even slather a tree, slather, and come up with a Pokemon that we, ourselves, We'll put onto the team, who knows. So we've got two Chesto Berries. Let's go ahead and put one in here. Okay, not entirely sure what that animation was. Looks like we're getting a little bit sleepy. D-Mike, there is no rest for the weary. And we will water them with our spray duck. We would love to sprinkle. I just wish that these, <laughs> of course, we love having happy berries. I just wish that I could see the animation all of the berry plots so far have been facing away from the character, which is a little unfortunate. But we've got a big test ahead of us here in the Valley Windworks with Team Galactic trying to siphon some energy. Pretty evil. Let's go ahead and use this tree as our demo tree. With that sweet scent in the air, that slather that bark with our honey, our sweet goo. There we go. And the next time, we come to this area, we should be able to enjoy that tree. Probably the next time I record, I will just go ahead and check it on my way out. Why not? And right away, the galactic grunt that locked themselves inside admits to being the biggest looser of all. And they're gonna alert their commander, uh-oh. Well, that's not what we want. 
I will be quiet here for a moment because the music inside here is great. Hopefully you enjoy it. This is kind of the galactic theme. It's very jazzy. I like myself some nice cool jazz. If you know what I'm saying. And once again, more uh, more bug Pokemon. And I don't know if that's just because it's like the basic kind of Pokemon to go after. Just not 100% sure I understand the choice of it being, you know, Wurmples and Silcoons and Cascoons, whatever. Not 100% sure I quite get it, but... It is what it is, but what's nice is having two Pokemon, I didn't realize this. Having two Pokemon that know Intimidate, so that's very good. It's a quick way to cut down on the enemy's physical ability to attack. We like that. And that sprite for the, the Cocoon Pokemon, not great. Looked a little basic. Now he's not going to get a bonus. Unfortunate. No Christmas bonus for you, buddy. How are you going to afford gifts for the wife and kids? I'm not even entirely sure the age of the Galactic Grunts. They don't look very old. I mean, obviously they're older than us because we are a child. They look to at least be like, you know, unpaid interns. Although actually it did say they were paid interns. So they're being, they are, there is some sort of economy in this game where the Galactic Grunts are being paid. It just makes me wonder though, is like, are they being paid in actual money? Are they being paid like in goods? Are they being paid in services? That's a question for the ages. One thing that you'll always get at DMIC Industries is plenty of banter and ideas that mean absolutely nothing to anybody. So you're welcome. That, what we like to call in the business, is quality. You'll only find it here at DMIC Industries. Comment, subscribe, like the videos, etc. ETC. So there's another Glammeow. Seems to be a fan favorite. Glammeow being very fast. This one doesn't know it. But a popular move for Glammeow is Fake Out. And that's rather annoying. Fake out is a move that usually hits first, has priority, and it causes you to flinch, lose your turn. We do not want that. But these battles are doing a really great job of raising up Samuel. I don't know why they capitalized the word trainer. Is that a proper noun? Who knows? Okay, so we're getting to the nitty gritty here. Let's make sure that we have a Pokemon that does know Intimidate first. We do, it is Steven. You'll see why in a moment. Uh-oh. So it looks like this red-haired Femme Fatale. I like her outfit. I think that's really great that Team Galactic obviously is space-themed and I love space, big space nerd. So one of Galactic's three commanders. Their mission is to create a new world better than their own. And people have little understanding, so they're definitely talking down to us a little bit. That seems like fair terms for a fight, you know. Why not? I really enjoy all the galactic commanders in this game. I think their sprites are all really good, so. We'll take it. We'll take on Mars, the fiery red planet. Unfortunately, Intimidate is not going to work on this Zubat, but that is not what we're hoping to use Intimidate for. And I'm actually going to need to switch into something. Okay. So the Zubat is a bit of a coward using, I didn't even know it got you, that's actually a really nice move. But here is the ace for Mars or Perugly. It's also a very strange thing. What do you think you're doing to my Pokemon? Uh, whooping its behind. I really enjoy the Perugly Sprite. It looks like a very, looks very thick with two C's and that's how we like it here at D-Mike Industry. 
course. And there's the fake out, which is really annoying. Actually, really strong. So that's not good. But we'll be okay here. Let's go ahead and let's get everybody involved. Why not? Spread the experience around on top of the experience all. I also love that we're inside like a power plant, which somehow has us like in this weird backdrop. Like we're in space somehow. I don't know. Not entirely sure what's happening. But we're gonna try to set up a little bit. Shoot our goo all over this Brugly. I think its whiskers kind of look like guitars. I don't believe that Brugly has any sort of inclination to be related to music, but that's okay. And having Charlie here, our fisticuff specialist, can take care of the end of this battle. Yeah, I do really like, I mean, the aesthetic of where we are makes no sense. The environment is very silly, but I think it's fun. As we'll see here, Perugly is very, very bulky. But it doesn't have great moves for being the ace Pokemon. Not great. So I think we'll do... Let's see if a Mach Punch will win the day. It will not. Great. And it also has a berry. Not our berry, unfortunately. It did not eat berry. That'd be pretty traumatizing, wouldn't it? But that's okay. We'll try another power-up punch to bolster our attack stat. We love that. Don't even need it. You can kiss our flame behind. This is a Pokemon that if you've ever done like a speed run, oh wow, we all get a ton of, a ton of HP, or not HP experience for that. This is gonna turn into, into puzzle slash bridge pieces, I know it. This Perugly is a, can be a run ender for like a speed run or for a, um, for like a Nuzlocke run. We'll talk about that later, but I don't, Fury Swipe sucks. We're not, we're not learning that. We're not learning that garbage. Nope. Everybody gets a level up on the team, which is very nice. Who knew that Team Galactic believed in socialism? It's not what it is, but we'll just do it for the bit. And Samuel learned to recover. I did not know that Shellos was a... Oh yeah, we're not done with the fight yet. Oops. Just kidding, guys. Let's throw Samuel out there. He's gained a couple levels. All kind of male S names on the team. We'll mix it up, don't worry. Don't you sweat your sweet little hearts. This Zubat ain't no thing. Let's go ahead and try to use Water Gun. Oh, that's not cool. Supersonic is a very annoying move that confuses Pokemon. I actually do really enjoy using, you know, stuff like Confusion and... Confuse Ray. Not Confusion, sorry. Supersonic. Confuse Ray. Well, you have nobody to, to U-turn into. And nothing makes me more annoyed when I'm trying to go somewhere in my vehicle and someone's making an illegal U-turn. You don't do that in the Midwest. You just don't do it. So that nets Samuel another level. Getting tons of HP stats. That's really nice. Not really a ton to say elsewise, but we'll take some more HP. And I love... There's uh, Commander Mars smiling like a donut. Her deep V haircut. It's like a sort of a play on a bob. Really nice. And we gave her quite the tilly. And she's gonna peace out. So now we can talk to this little girl's father who was trapped in here. I'm assuming he's some sort of electrical engineer. And they want to make a new universe. Not in my universe. Nothing they said made of any sense. And I think that's really funny because the grunts clearly don't know what they're participating in and the commanders are trying to like talk down to everybody else. So, I mean, that's kind of how things work in general. Those at the top like to keep the industry secrets to themselves. So we have freed this man. Um, a very strange <laughs> approach into this building by this little girl. who was upset at her malodorous father. 
and she's giving a little hint about a balloon Pokemon will come visiting again. That's something that we'll learn about in the future. That's actually a pretty fun gimmick as I get stuck on the wall. Pretty fun, uh, maybe it's not a gimmick, but it's something that happens that we will explore another time. So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed these beautiful windmills. I've been D-Mike, this has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.